the previous video, I described the program, how it works, and the different features, uh, as well as the online interface. In this one, I want to describe the suggestions and steps that are given at the bottom of the program descri description page. So if you go to CS141 and go over here to Contagion, the description of the program, and then scroll down past the sample run of the program, we are here at the suggestions and steps. Uh, note that at the top of this page, there's a link to part one of the video, and you should really watch that before you go on to this part, part two. Uh, most of the assessments within Codio, uh, you will not be able to pass them until you write a significant number of the features in this program. The reason for this is that the program, when you run it, has a message at the end indicating who wins the game. And to know who wins the game, you have to count the number of pieces of X's and the number of pieces of O's. And to do that, you have to implement actually making moves. So there's some work that you have to put in before you can actually come up with um, output to match the assessments. So use the supplied starting code that's given within Codio and also available if you click on this link here. It's attached to this page. Um, and there's a backup copy that's in Codio, as mentioned previously. You need to handle converting user input to uppercase. See my solution in program one on Piazza if you're not sure how to do this. If you go into Piazza, we're normally in question and answer here in Piazza, but you come over here to resources. On the resources page, here's where grades get posted as they're updated. Down here, this is the solution to program one, and subsequent program solutions will be listed here as well. Uh, second step is you need to count how many pieces there are for X's, how many pieces there are for O's. So you need to declare variables for those and initialize them to be two because at the top of our program, we see that there's two X's already in there, there's two O's already in there on the board, and so then these things change over time. And uh, then next, use those counters or how many X's and how many O's there are. So when the loop exits at the bottom, like the user types in X for exit, or when the board fills up, it displays the appropriate message X wins, O wins, or tie game. Note that this needs to appear exactly as shown, X space wins, capital W, exclamation mark at the end, same for O, tie game has a period at the end of it. So I encourage you to actually copy and paste each of these messages into your program to make sure you get it exactly the same as what's expected. So next comes implementing making adjacent moves. So these are moves where you're going immediately next to, so if I'm starting from A1, adjacent moves would be A2 or diagonally B2 or um, horizontally going down to B1. So um, immediately adjacent, so just one square away in any direction. So you first need to read in the row and column values for both the source as well as the destination. We saw that in Codio, the sample code that's already given inside of main includes the current row only, which is the first of four variables needed to store the user input. And then that variable is also used to see if the first user input is something special like I for instructions or X for exit, and later it'd be P for a pass. But you'll need three other variables to store the other pieces. So you need row and column for source, row and column for destination. Then to actually make the move, I encourage you, highly encourage you to create these two utility functions that are described here. First one is a function to get the value at one of the 25 board position values. So you send it the row column values and it returns and it figures out, depending on the row column values, it figures out which variable you should be paying attention to and returns the number, the character that is um, stored at that corresponding board position variable. So that's get the value at a position. Second utility function is set the value at one of the 25 board, board position values. Here, we send it the row and column, which is going to help us figure out which variable is going to be changed. And we send it the value of the character, that is, that's going to be stored at that position. And in this case, we don't return anything. So the proper use of these two, the get and the set functions, um, allows us to write general purpose code without having arrays. And that's part of the reason why I've implemented that restriction of no arrays are allowed for this program. So then to actually make the move, we set the destination to be the character that's at the source position. In other words, if we look at the first move up here, I'm moving from, I'm making an adjacent move, which means I leave that one there, and here I change this, instead of being blank, I change it to be an X which is the same as the square we're moving from. 
And so then when the board gets redisplayed, instead of the blank being displayed there, now the new value in that variable, the x, is displayed there. After making adjacent moves is working, you should test it both for x and o. Then we want to implement making a jump move. Same user input of row and column for source and row and column for destination, except for now for a jump move, the original piece gets changed. So the first jump move that we see in our example up here is here where we went from E1 when it's the turn for O to move, and we go from E1 to C3. And so this piece, because it's not adjacent, these would be the three adjacent pieces, we go from here, we jump over this piece and go here, and this one goes away. So we put a blank space into the variable that corresponds to this position, and we put an O into the variable that corresponds to this space in the middle of the board. And our Codeo sample code includes some documentation to illustrate. So we're coming from piece 21, so that one gets blanked out. We go to piece 13, and the O gets placed into piece 13. Then implement the code to handle input a P for a pass move. This is similar for the I and the X moves. So we just add an extra condition for that. Um, it's unlikely that you'll be in a situation where you need to do that, but for completeness, we have included it with the program. Um, then we handle, we write the code to handle the three error conditions in using the exact error messages that are shown in the sample run above. So those error messages are shown here. So invalid move, where you have to move from the piece that belongs to you, or invalid move where the destination um, isn't empty, or um, that you're trying to move far too far away not into an adjacent or a jump move but something besides one of those the the test to check if a move is not one square away or not a jump move two squares away um, my recommendation there is use the the uh, the current row and column value and the destination row and column value and then compare the difference between those components so take the starting row and the destination row and do get the absolute value of the difference between those and get the destination column or the, the starting column and the de destination column and get the absolute value of the difference between those two and then those you can use those numbers to do some computation in an if statement to figure out um, if the move is valid or not lastly on a flip move you want to take um, you you you, you see where you end up and look at all the pieces around that and if any of them belong to your opponent then you flip those pieces over. So um, a reasonable first approach here is to have 25 if conditions to check if my current row and column is a particular set of values. Then, and then you explicitly look at the pieces that are around that board position. So for example, let's look at the first flip that we encounter up here. We're moving here from a2 to B2, so we're moving from A2 to B2. So we come down here, B2, and so we look at um, when the X shows up here, are there any adjacent pieces? So that'd be these pieces, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this. Are any of those an O? If so, flip them to become an X. And in this case, this is the only opponent piece that's adjacent to the destination, so this one flips from being an O to being an X. So with the if statements, you'd say, if the row is B and the column is 2, then check this, 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 and this. And if any of them is an O, change that to be an X, like we see here. Enjoy.